Hey everyone, I'm Trevor, and today we're gonna go land by land showing you every single ride at Disney California Adventure, sharing helpful tips along the way that you need to know. So let's get going. Beginning here on Sunset Boulevard, the large majority of attractions are shows like Turtle Talk with Crush or Mickey's PhilharMagic. But there is one ride located in this land, and it's Monsters, Inc. Mike and Sully to the Rescue. This Lightning Lane attraction features no height requirement and is a slow-moving dark ride through Monstropolis. Monsters, Inc. is the only ride in the park to feature the Buddy Pass service. This works like single rider, but for up to two people instead of one. To obtain a Buddy Pass, speak to the cast member at the front of the attraction. If we head into Avengers Campus from the back, we'll first come across Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. Say what you will about the old Tower of Terror, but I love this new version that they first debuted in May of 2017. Be aware, however, that the experience can now be nausea-inducing as the ride vehicle never stops bouncing, even during the added video sequences. Every ride is a little different, as the ride randomly cycles between six songs that could believably be on Star-Lord's mixtape. This Lightning Lane attraction features a 42-inch height requirement. A little deeper in Avengers Campus is Web Slingers, a Spider-Man adventure. This Lightning Lane attraction has no height requirement and does feature a single rider line. I hear a lot of negative opinions about this attraction, but my family really enjoys it. It's essentially Toy Story Midway Mania, but requires you to swing your arms to fire webs at the spider bots that have gotten loose. Pull the lever, Kronk! <laughs> Speaking of fire, your arms are sure to burn from the exertion if you go all out like me. You'll receive both an individual score and a team score to see how you compare with other guests. And Spider-Man Web Slingers is going to be our first ride here at DCA with Single Rider. We explained this over in our Disneyland video, but in case you didn't see that one, Single Rider is a service that they provide in several different rides throughout the park that allow just one person to essentially bypass a lot of the line. They they fill in the empty seats with those single rider people. So if you take a whole party into the single rider line, your party will be split up. Because of this, the minimum age for single rider is seven because they very likely will be by themselves in a ride vehicle. From here, we move over into Cars Land. And first up is Mater's Junkyard Jamboree. This whip style attraction has a 32 inch height requirement. It's a pretty standard whip ride, nothing surprising here. The queue and the ride are Mater themed and the ride is narrated and music sung by Mater himself. During the fall and winter holidays, this ride gets an overlay that changes the music, but the experience will stay the same. Next is Luigi's Rollickin' Roadsters. This ride, like Mater's, also has a 32 inch height requirement. This is actually the first height milestone in Disney parks, making it among the earliest rides a child will be eligible for. Because Luigi's features a trackless system, this ride often breaks or is down for maintenance. But when it's open, it's a fun experience for the whole family. And lastly, at the far back of Cars Land is Radiator Springs Racers. This is the most popular ride in Disney California Adventure, and quite possibly the most popular ride at the whole Disneyland Resort. Let me know down in the comments whether you prefer Radiator Springs Racers or Rise of the Resistance. This attraction has a 40 inch height requirement, a single rider line, and features an individual lightning lane, meaning it's not a part of the regular Genie Plus service, and is instead a separate a la carte fee. Radiator Springs Racers shares a track system with Epcot's Test Track, but I believe this to be the superior version. If you were enjoying this video and finding it helpful, please hit the like and subscribe button. It really does help out the channel. And if you want to save money on your next Disneyland vacation, call my friends at Getaway Today and tell them that SoCal Disney Dad sent you. Or click the link down in the description and use my coupon code to save on their already discounted packages. The next land in Disney California Adventure is Pixar Pier. The vast majority of rides can be found here and at neighboring Paradise Gardens Park. The first ride is also one of Pixar Pier's most iconic, and that's Incredicoaster. California Screamin' was rethemed to the Incredicoaster in June of 2018. My six-year-old recently hit the 48-inch height requirement last month, and after some initial fear, bravely rode his first big roller coaster, and it instantly became a favorite that he wants to ride over and over again. It features a 55 mile an hour launch with a ride time of two and a half minutes, making it one of the longest coasters in the US. Incredicoaster has both a lightning lane and a single rider line. 
Right next door is Jesse's Critter Carousel. This standard carousel has no height requirement, and for the longest time was where we took my youngest son, while my oldest rode Incredicoaster with the other parent. Now that my youngest is tall enough for Incredicoaster, those days are behind us. That doesn't mean we won't ever ride Jesse's Critter Carousel again, but we will likely ride it less frequently moving forward. Another short distance away is Toy Story Midway Mania. This lightning lane attraction is a rope drop destination where the line fills quickly alongside rides like Radiator Springs Racers and Guardians of the Galaxy. Toy Story Midway Mania is a video game style ride with no height requirement that will have you playing five different Toy Story themed mini games to score points. At the very end, the highest score in the vehicle will be awarded along with accolades for best this month, best today, and best this hour. Our next attraction has no height requirement, meaning that even a baby can ride it. But it also happens to be one of the scariest rides in the whole park. Pixar Pal Around, affectionately called Mickey's Death Wheel, has both swinging and non-swinging carriages, making this sort of two rides in one. I and my oldest love the swinging, while my wife and youngest only tolerate the non-swinging. The swinging carriages are equipped with bags for those who might get sick. The last ride in Pixar Pier is Inside Out Emotional Whirlwind. This spinning ride was rethemed from Flix Flyers and relocated to Pixar Pier following the closure of A Bug's Land in 2018. It has no height requirement and doesn't really need much further explanation. From here, we enter Paradise Gardens Park, and first up we have Silly Symphony Swings. This is a standard swing ride with a minimum height requirement of 40 inches. Guests between 40 and 48 inches will be required to ride in a tandem swing with a supervising companion of at least 14 years of age. But we recently learned that even once your child hits 48 inches, they also need to be 7 years of age to ride alone, as that's Disney's minimum age requirement for solo riding on any attraction. Goofy's Sky School is the next ride on our tour of all the Disney California Adventure rides. This lightning lane attraction has a single ride line and a minimum height requirement of 42 inches. The ride vehicle is pretty tight and a tad uncomfortable even for me. It's a standard Wild Mouse attraction, so expect rapid and jerky movements along with some minor drops. It's fun, but a ride that we often only ride in the morning as the line can get long later in the day. If your little one is afraid of Guardians of the Galaxy, Jumpin' Jellyfish is a good intermediate drop ride without the scare factor. It still takes you high up into the air, but it's a gentle drop with amazing views of Pixar Pier and Paradise Gardens Park. This attraction has a minimum height requirement of 40 inches. Right next door is the Golden Zephyr. This high-flying spinning ride is one of the last holdouts from the old California theme that once dominated this whole area. It features no height requirement, but I want you to be aware that that doesn't mean it's without its limits. Though it's not listed anywhere, Golden Zephyr does not allow lap sitting or children in a baby carrier. This means that children will need to be old enough to sit beside you in order to ride. And lastly, for this area of the park, we have the Little Mermaid Ariel's Undersea Adventure. This attraction has no height requirement, but recently added a lightning lane on November 19th, 2023. It's a slow-moving, omni-mover dark ride, which means that the ride vehicle never stops, even as you board. This system makes for quick loading and a constantly moving line that means that the lines are almost always relatively short. Until recently, this ride was also my youngest son's favorite in the whole park. We have just a few more rides left in our tour of Disney California Adventure, and they can all be found in the Grizzly Peak Recreation Area. The first one you might not even know existed. Inside the Redwood Creek Challenge Trail is a flying fox attraction called Sequoia Smoke Jumpers. Children must be between 42 and 63 inches and be under 12 years of age to ride this attraction. The line is often so short, my kids will ride this over and over before moving on to the rest of this awesome kids' play area. The most prominent ride in the Grizzly Peak Recreation Area is Grizzly River Run. This water ride places you in an eight-person tube and sends you through rapids and down drops that ensure you will get wet, but you may get soaked. There are free lockers available just outside the attraction, but you could also stick your bag in the center of the vehicle. Just be aware it's not impervious to water either. This Lightning Lane attraction has a single rider line and features a minimum height requirement of 42 inches. And finally, our last ride at Disney California Adventure is Soarin' Around the World. It features a lightning lane, a single rider line, and a minimum height requirement of 40 inches. Soarin' is an IMAX simulator attraction that fits roughly 80 to 90 people per show, and lasts approximately 5 minutes. 
You aren't terribly high in the air, but those with a fear of heights may not like the appearance of height that the ride delivers. Every year during Food and Wine Festival in March and April, Disney brings back Soarin' Over California, the old version of the ride that many, including myself, believe to be the better version. And we wish Disney would bring it back permanently in the California park, while leaving it as Soarin' Around the World in Epcot where it's more thematically appropriate. Whew, there, I got that off my chest. Well, that's it for our time here today at Disney California Adventure. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. And if you missed my Disneyland ride guide, you can click it here and keep watching. Still got questions? Go ahead and drop them in the comments below. I'm always happy to answer them. Thanks for watching, and we will see you again next time.